Hello, welcome to the Jenkins Google Summer of Code Office Hours. Today is May 26. We don't have any specific topics on the agenda for today, so I suggest we just focus on Kone um, and then sync up on whatever uh, logistics activities. Um, and yeah, my main question is, um, uh, do you have any questions? Yeah, we can uh, just discuss whatever you want about the GSOC process, uh, your particular projects, etc. And we can answer these questions while we're on the call. No, so no questions. Um, then uh, I have a question uh, to student. Um, so uh, should, should you have you already established uh, regular meetings with your mentors? Um, yes, Oleg, we have, and um, it's we are meeting every week, once every week, uh, and hopefully moving forward if we need. We talked about maybe setting up twice a week. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We have also decided to meet once a week, but when are you meeting? That's not yet decided. So we are finding a time come, uh, that is okay with all the mentors, and then we'll go ahead. Yeah. Now, project remote monitoring will uh, choose to proceed with uh, one meeting per week, at least for now. Uh, but yeah, we may adjust. But yeah, my recommendation, as we discussed last week, is to focus on. Uh, um, asynchronous communications when possible and when convenient. So don't rely on meetings as the main synchronization point. You have chat and you can uh, drop any questions there at any moment. Yes. Okay. So then, yeah, just quick updates of uh, what happened uh, over the past week. Um, I apologize so that uh, things do not go as quick as I would like. Uh, yeah, we had some escalations and more escalations, um, and yeah. So what has changed? Firstly, yeah, we started say, started sending feedback to the rejected students. Um, I still have uh, a few emails to send, but uh, yeah, I hope to complete uh, uh, this part tonight, so that uh, we get it over the line. We also updated the GSOC landing page, so if you see my screen, uh, that you can see that. Now we have all Jenkins projects listed here. Um, uh, so, yeah, and uh, the resources here. So, for any student, including Shruti, Aditya, we have these uh, pages. And this, we invite you to actually update these pages because um, they were created just basically quick hack and slash uh, based on uh, uh, what uh, we had in the project ideas and uh, the metadata we had. So, this information is fully owned by you as a student. And you're welcome to adjust it as much as you want, and you're welcome to keep it up to date. So for example, you have defined uh, office hours, please put them here so that uh, there is some information. You have a meeting notes uh, document, again, please add the link to that. Um, uh, same, same if you see any changes in the background and project details and status you would like to put here, or if you would like to put some screenshots, video recordings, uh, you can totally do that. And uh, if it's needed, it's actually quite easy to do because the, even if you don't want to check out the repository, etc., you can improve this page. Then, the, well, depending on your experience, I'm currently in the browser, which is not locked into a GitHub. So let's uh, try again. Um, uh, so so here uh, I should be logged into GitHub. And here, for example, if I want to update this page, I can just click improve this page. And here you get uh, this page in just GitHub editor. You can see information there with preview. So basically we render a ASCII doc, there is some metadata which would be rendered, but the rest you can just see the text. So for example, if you want to add a link um, to Office Hours, for example, we meet uh, every week at, let's 
let's say on PMA UPC. So it's just an idea. So here, for example, you say at one PM UTC, so this will be rendered. And also what we recommend, uh, there is a Google Calendar. So if you go to Jenkins uh, your events, you can see that uh, there are meetings listed here. Uh, so basically there are all meetings, including the, these GSOC office hours. So it's called Jenkins Calendar. And this Jenkins Calendar, yeah, it's just a Google Calendar. You can uh, ask uh, one of the or can means including me to put a link and uh, then you can just navigate to a particular meeting. For example, here is a meeting. Okay, I can show you a real example. So we have created a project for a meeting for Jenkins Remote Monitoring. So there is a meeting in our calendar. I hope, yeah, okay. So this is the meeting. And here, for example, you can see that uh, we have um, it announced. We have a link to the Zoom chat. Um, later, I will also add a Google Doc. Uh, so this is a meeting, and everyone can see that. And for example, if you want to sh share that, so for example, you click Publish Event, uh, link uh, to event, and you can put it uh, directly into um, uh, the browser. Um, so for example, here you can see uh, the calendar link. something like that. And for example, with the your set uh, link to meeting notes. Okay, something like that. And then uh, when somebody navigates to your page, firstly there is metadata, etc. And here you can see that there is a page here providing a link. So you can click on the calendar as a visitor. You get, uh, uh, yeah, so I might, have to cut this moment. No, you basically just uh, uh, can uh, add this uh, link to your calendar, and uh, you can also add more information. And please don't hesitate to edit your pages as much as you want. So these pages is basically a front page for you. So when you will be referencing your project, it is want to make it into the Jenkins community yeah, outside when submitting your evaluation. So yeah, it's your best interest to maintain this page and to improve it gradually. And yeah. I highly recommend that you just try it out because everything is enabled so you can just submit your pull request. Okay. Questions? Nope. Hey, so again, it's, uh, this page is owned uh, by you as students, not by mentors. And yeah, basically it's your responsibility to, to keep it uh, up to date to some extent we expect it from uh, the students working on the Jenkins project. Again, it doesn't mean that you have to put daily updates there, but uh, when you reach major milestones, for example, there is a relation where you do a demo or you have released your first feature, made it available to users, um, we recommend to update this page gradually so that everyone who navigates to this page and uh, in Google Summer, of course, there is a lot of promotion historically happening. Um, so. Yeah, just uh, keep this page up to date and uh, help uh, others to discover that. Okay. So that's what I wanted to ask. And uh, yeah, this is also something uh, you should actually consider doing during the community bonding phase. And another thing, as we discussed last week, is um, working with your mentors uh, to create a coding plan for the first coding phase. So what it means is that uh, by day one of uh, your coding uh, phase, you expect to be able to actually work on, on something. Uh, there might be some flexibility in the plan, etc. But uh, uh, it shouldn't be a situation when uh, the first day of coding starts, you open your uh, integrated development environment then uh, see okay I need a repository and you don't have a repository uh, or I want to do something I'm not sure what to do so your main goal for community bonding and for discussions with mentors etc is to enable yourself uh, to work during the first coding phase and use this time wisely because it's really important to have everything in place Yeah. 
Christian, Jeff, would you like to add something? Nothing for me. Um, nope, nothing on my side. I do agree with the making sure we have everything in place for the coding period. That really helps make things go smoothly. So. Yeah, and my advice to everyone was to do the first pull request as soon as possible. So, for example, if you create a new plugin, you can start from creating the skeleton. So there is a project called uh, Jenkins Plugin Archetype, which basically creates a skeleton for you. So a first pull request you could do is just using this plugin to generate a skeleton, maybe a few hello world actions, uh, just to try the, the development flow in your environment. Um, maybe add some readme, a link to the project page, and then commit that. And then you can gradually expand, because when you have skeleton, uh, you can uh, deliver uh, the rest of the features in a continuous way. And uh, since we are talking about Jenkins project, we really advise doing so. So um, yeah, creating the uh, first initial pull request with initial data and then creating uh, as small pull requests as possible so that you gradually and continuously improve your project. Um, I have a question about uh, like, meetings are absolutely essential for you know anything that's related to plugin development in terms of uh, what can be needed out of the project for example the one um so we i've started working and um we have the recurring meeting set up but also there are some things about the ui ux side of the plugin and understanding the jelly files much better so some things like that mm -hmm. You, what meetings would you suggest that we should definitely attend? Yep, so we can organize uh, knowledge transfers on demand. Again, uh, as I offered uh, last time, uh, you can take a look uh, at the recordings we already had. Um, there is a lot of contributor guidelines. Um, mm -hmm. Have you found this information already? Yes, yes. Um, I found the, the, the developing plugin and a bunch of videos that are on there and also I think some blog posts which I haven't read yet, but yes. I. There are blog posts, like we discussed last time, there is a tutorial on uh, Jenkins.io slash developer uh, mm -hmm. where you can basically go step by step to create your first plugin. Uh, if you haven't seen that, uh, I can can share show it to you. Um, but. Mm -hmm. uh, and in terms of, of learning Jelly, what um, I, I I'm not an expert in it, but what little I know, what what was helpful for me was finding a, a simple plugin um, in in the the Jenkins I/O repo and just kind kind of copying it. And it was a little bit of struggle at first and, and until it clicked. But that's that's one one suggestion. And um, you can r reach out to the mentors via via Slack um, between between meetings. I, um, I, 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 I would recommend not not waiting um, until the weekly meeting mm -hmm. if you're stuck. Is, is, is that is that would that be helpful or? Um, is it yeah, yeah, definitely. I am working on you know like the jelly files from I think the Hello World plugin and also as just understanding. I went to the GitHub plugin earlier. I was just like trying to understand, but jelly is kind of so confusing. Um, but yeah. yeah. Yeah, for, pick a smaller one because <laughs> I think the GitHub mm -hmm. may, plugin may have a lot of a lot of UI, if I recall. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are many plugins, um, and yeah, Jelly is a quite complicated framework. Well, actually, it's quite simple, but uh, it's not something you would see every day in the world because uh, mm -hmm. Jenkins was created 15 years ago. So Jelly is, let's say, more legacy. You may have seen that many modern plugins uh, actually use uh, mm -hmm. JavaScript uh, mostly, plus um, uh, REST APIs. So for example, uh, two years ago, when uh, Shin Yuzhang was working on Code Coverage API, uh, he yeah, he used some Jelly code, but uh, the most of the UI complexity actually went to JavaScript. And uh, if you create plugins with rich UI, I think it would be the best approach. And, uh, if you're interested, there is user experience special interest group, um, which I continuously discuss this UI and also the development uh, of UI for Jenkins. So you can join it and just uh, learn from others there. Thank you.
Yeah, so it's Jenkins IO six uh, UX. Um, yeah, so mm, they basically uh, mean it every week or so at the moment. Uh, and yeah, again, if you're interested uh, when they meet um, on this page, uh, they also have meetings. So just here you can click on meetings on this page. And yeah, it redirects you to the Google document apparently in this case. Uh, but yeah, there is all the schedule below. So on every Wednesday, every two Wednesdays, 4 p.m. UTC, uh, there is a meeting. And I believe it's today. Yeah, it's today. So right after this meeting, you can join and uh, just ask any questions or see what uh, people discuss. I have no idea, but uh, because I haven't joined the, the last two meetings or so, but I can go to the agenda. And here you can see that. Uh, okay. Here you can see that the agenda it's uh, you know March 17th because yeah there was an issue with uh, uh, Google Docs ownership and I believe that the calendar link wasn't updated. So sorry for example when things don't quite work, but in theory if you go to this page you should be able to see the recent document. Like for example here if you go here you open our meetings notes uh, for JSOC and they, as you can see I also didn't make any notes for today. By the way, um, yeah, all um, our Google Docs, etc., they should be available for contribution by anyone. So you, when you participate in meetings, etc., you can, you're welcome to just suggest changes. So there is there are a few modes. So something is going on with the Google Drive because it requests me to reload the page two times already. But here, so what I wanted to say that there are multiple modes, editing, suggesting, and viewing. And by default, uh, we configure documents uh, in a way that uh, um, anyone on the internet can comment. So what it means uh, that even if you have no permission to the doc, you just open it, I click suggesting, and uh, then you're in the, the suggestion mode. So basically you can say that, okay, like was too lazy, too busy, didn't create a um, bit, but you can do it on your own. So for example, you go to any Google document, uh, then yeah, for example, here you can say that uh, we had Connie, yeah, and then we discussed, for example, uh, yeah, um, uh, knowledge transfers. Uh, for Jenkins uh, plugin development. And yeah, if you discuss any links, etc., again, you can follow that uh, and uh, uh, add, uh, information. And please don't hesitate to contribute because keeping these meeting notes, etc., is also a type of contribution because somebody may read, uh, read this document or we can later use them to improve our documentation, which is not awesome. It exists, but it would be improved a lot as in uh, pretty much every other open source project. And you're welcome to contribute in such a way just by helping uh, okay so what else we discussed status check-in uh, today we also discussed uh, um, yeah uh, updating uh, project pages Does it work for you? So again, any questions, any comments, and yeah, sorry for long detours, uh, but yeah, I'm just showing how particular things work in the Jenkins community. And don't hesitate to ask because yeah, we try to improve the uh, way we can. Okay, and yeah, what I said, if you need a specific knowledge transfer session, so this year we didn't apply upon any session yet, but we can do it upon request. So if you see a particular area in which you want to get more expertise, if you don't see information, if your members don't see information, just raise a question and we will try to help with organizing that. Great, thank you. Yeah.
And basically the same for any page on Jenkins IO. So for example, if you go to the through the tutorial, uh, you go, for example, to create a plugin, etc. you see a mistake there, or you want to extend it a bit, you can always um, click on the same page, improve this page and edit everything. You can check out the site, you can build it locally if you want. Uh, there are contributing guidelines and you will need to do that when you work on complex updates. And for example, when you work on blog posts, we expect you to write. Um, and yeah, you can find all the information here, how to get it running. But if you have a Docker, it's actually just a few commands. If you have Windows and if you need to get uh, this ecosystem running, um, you will uh, like you need Windows subsystem for Linux uh, because our make files are not uh, platform independent. Um, and uh, if you need such assistance, please contact me. Uh, but yeah, for common cases, yeah, yeah, there are just two make commands. So you say make prepare and then make run, and you get the website uh, also development mode running. I'm not sure what it's, no, it's not running for me, but yeah, it takes a few minutes to start up because everything is vaccarized and relatively slow. But after that, you can do live changes and verify uh, your content uh, in the browser. Uh, similarly to how I do it with uh, GitHub as a dog, but you can uh, view real websites there. Okay. Any, any patches to documentation, etc., would be much appreciated because we, as experienced contributors, we have so much sacred knowledge, and sometimes we just uh, do not see the obvious uh, gaps in our documentation, especially for newcomers who just started the project. So any feedback about that would be appreciated. And even if you do not fix the issue, there is another magic button called the report the problem. So for example, here, so it's, uh, um, again, it's semi-automated. So you report the bug for the user experience page, it automatically puts uh, the links, etc. The rest you would need to fill in. But yeah, for example, you can say that uh, there is no log uh, for UXC. You can just say that uh, there is a task, no logo for the UXC, please update. And somebody will eventually triage that and maybe even implement that. So if you see some significant issues you are not uh, ready to work on, uh, please uh, submit uh, tickets on GitHub issues. If you see something which you can just fix in a minute, like a type of fix, do not hesitate to submit this pull request. It, yeah, it take, uh, takes less than one minute, but it's still a valuable contribution. Uh, so just, yeah, just do that. Any questions, comments? Yeah, I haven't put uh, the recording um, of the previous meeting here, but yeah, usually what I do, I put uh, recording things right inside the agenda notes. So you can always find the recording and they will also publish recording of this meeting. Anything else for today? If not, just thanks everyone. So we usually keep these meetings open until uh, there are any questions. And yeah, if there are no questions left, we just uh, close down. Uh, and yeah. If nobody joins the meeting, usually I uh, leave for the meeting and stop it um, after 10 minutes. Uh, so okay, you are always welcome to follow up in the chat if needed. And again, please do not keep uh, the meetings. So now we have a uh, Slack uh, channel in this DF workspace. We also have Gitter channel. So any of these channels is totally legit and feel free to ask any questions there at any moment when uh, you need assistance and somebody will be around to help. We have something like three or four hundred participants in the Gitter channel uh, for JSOC, and well, some of them um, help. And thanks to them. Okay. 
If nothing yeah. else, I guess, uh, yeah, thanks everyone. And, uh, Thank you. Me and, uh, Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye. See you at the next meeting, Kristen. Yeah, thanks. Good seeing you.